Now, what about the Jews under this condition? Well, you know, originally, the idea was, you know, the whole world is going to become Islam. And just as Muhammad did to the six Jewish tribes in Northern Arabia, that was the pattern supposed to be. Namely, if they don't just convert to Islam, you just might kill them. But later on, they had large areas. They had kingdoms. They, not only that, they, they conquered areas that were, to them, beyond their imagination. Let me give you an example. Out of Mecca and Medina, they went into cities where there had been the perfection of Greco-Roman civilization. And just to give you an example, a building with a dome on top of it. To them, it was incomprehensible. How do you do it? What is it? They were overwhelmed with the advances of civilization of the world that they had conquered. So then their attitude began to change a little bit. And they said, you know, Muhammad actually said that there are people who should not be considered worthless because they did have a connection with God through prior revelation. So he called these people the people of the book. Of course, that term was applied to the Jews, but also to the Christians. Muhammad called the Jews the people of the book because they got the book. They got the Torah. They distorted it, but they were the first to get the Torah. Then the Christians are the people of the book because they got the Gospels. So he said, the people of the book are not pagans. They are actually non-believers who can be tolerated. So the non-believers who can be tolerated are the Jews and the Christians, primarily. Later on, evidently, some other Islamic rulers decided that the Zoroastrians could also be included as tolerated non-believers because they also are universalists and they believe in, in God. So basically, it was Jews, Christians, and Zoroastrians are tolerated non-believers. The others are pagans, and pagans have only one role, and that is to be destroyed or annihilated. Then when the Muslims decided that there are these non-believers who can be tolerated, the concept of dhimmi was established in Islam. The dhimmi in Islam is the non-believer who is permitted to live in the Muslim world. But the dhimmi has certain things attached to him. He has to pay an infidel tax. So he's inferior to the Muslim. Dhimmi is inferior to the Muslim. Just as the Jew was inferior to the Christian under Christian law, so the Jews and the Christians and the Zoroastrians are inferior to the Muslims. And therefore, certain things are imposed upon them, like taxes and, and other things. In certain areas more, and certain areas less. I mean, in Yemen, until 1950, a Jew could not walk on the sidewalk if a Muslim was on the sidewalk. He had to walk in the gutter. Uh, other things like that. But nevertheless, the distinction between the infidel, the non-believer, and the believer was clearly imposed. The other thing is that since Dimi, let's say Jews are Christians, people of the book, and they are to be tolerated, well, then they can live in an Islamic world with the restrictions imposed upon them. But shortly thereafter, it didn't take long, these Muslim kingdoms eventually became very large and rich and prosperous, and the Jews were able to flourish under the caliphate in Baghdad, which I'll explain in a moment.